Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because we have covenanted that during this season of COVID-19 to spend meaningful moments with the master. And the best way to spend meaningful moments with the master is to let the master speak to us. Jesus speak to us. God speak to us in God's word. This week, our focus is going to be no fear no fear. One verse that is repeated throughout the Bible is the verse, fear not. In fact, there are 365 fear nots in the Bible, which means that for every day of your life, there is a call to not be afraid or fear not. And this week, our focus is going to be on no fear. Now you have to listen to me carefully because when I say no fear, I'm using a word that is called uh, in grammar a homonym. And what's a homonym? A homonym is a word, or two words that sound alike but mean something totally different. So when I say no fear, am I using the word no, N-O, which is an adjective, an adjective that uh, highlights the noun fear, or am I using the word K-N-O-W, no fear, which is a verb? Well, the answer is this. I'm using the verb, K-N-O-W, no fear. Know what fear is all about. Know what are those things that we usually are afraid about, and know what God's antidote and answer to our fears and our extreme fears, which psychologists call phobia. This week, we're going to look, beginning today through Saturday, at six of the common fears that all people face. And what are those six fears? Well, one is a fear of the future, anxiety, worrying about what tomorrow is going to bring. Secondly is the fear of commitment. Third fear is the fear of failure. Fourth is the fear of loneliness, being by yourself. The fifth fear, common fear, all of us have, is the fear of death. And then the final fear we shall address on Saturday is the fear of God. But let's get started and let's talk about this first fear and that is the fear of the future. What tomorrow will bring. And we always have some anxiety about what tomorrow will bring, especially during the times in which we're living with COVID-19, what's going to happen politically, what's going to happen economically. Uh, will I be a victim of this virus? I mean, we have some legitimate things to worry about. Listen to me. It was Fred, oh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, in his first inaugural address as president of the United States back in 1932 who made these words famous. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Listen, that sounds good, but it's not true. There's a whole lot of things in our world that we have legitimate reasons to be afraid of. That is why when we talk about fear, basically there are two kinds of fears. There are healthy fears that keep us alive. Why do you lock your door? Because of a fear of crime. Uh, why do you pay your taxes? Because of fear of, be a fear of being convicted. These are healthy fears. Why do you do your best? Because of a fear of getting behind or losing your job. So these are healthy fears that motivate us to become our best. But there are also unhealthy fears. The over-exaggeration of the mind. It's the chicken little uh, syndrome in which you throw things out of proportion because an acorn has hit your head and now you think the sky is falling. So. Fear, my brothers and sisters, can be healthy. Fears can be unhealthy. We're going to talk about no fear. Know something about fear. Know what it is that's making you afraid. And we begin with fear, as I said, of the future. So how do, how do you define the future? This is what the future is. The future is that which lays ahead of you. That which lays ahead of you, in front of you, tomorrow, is your future. Why are we afraid of it? Because we don't control it. And we always tend to be afraid 
of those things which are out of our control. Two days are out of your control. The past, you can't control anything about the past because it's, it, the past is past. And you can't control what the future is going to bring. Therefore, we have fear and anxiety about what the fear is going to bring. We read the prognostication of, of the pundits on, on the news about the economy, about the uptick of COVID-19, and it creates great anxiety. No fear, no something K-N-O-W about our fear of the future. And here's a good verse and good for instructions on how to handle it in this Exodus chapter 14 verses 11 through 14, uh, when Moses and the children of Israel are at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army is in the rear and the Red Sea is in front of them and mountains are on both sides of them. And it says, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us here to die in the wilderness? Were there, weren't, weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? They're being sarcastic because one thing that they have a plethora of in Egypt is graves. They're called pyramids. We're constantly, even today, finding the mummies of people who've been buried. The whole idea of embalming uh, started in Egypt. So they're being sarcastic at Moses. And they says, weren't there graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It is better to be slaves in, a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Moses said to them, don't be afraid. I know the Red Sea's in front of you. You've got an obstacle in front of you, but this is what Moses said. You're afraid of the future? He says this to them. He says, stay calm and let's take the next step. Just take the next step. And God's going to tell them to take the next step. He's going to tell them, uh, why are you calling out to me, Moses? Tell the people to move forward. That's what the verse says. Now, we don't have it on the screen here, but if you continue to read the next verses, God's going to say, Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to take the next step. Now, here's the key on how to overcome fear of the future. Don't worry about the advanced steps. That's what messes us up. Don't worry about next month. Don't worry about uh, September and October. Don't even worry about next week. Don't worry about the advanced steps. God says, tell the people to move forward and take, in other words, take the next step. God's only going to give you enough grace and enough light to take the next step. This is Monday. Just walk in Monday and God will give you the grace to deal with with Tuesday, when Tuesday comes, because we walk by faith and not by sight. Now notice, God tells them to take the next step before they have figured out how they're going to deal with the Red Sea in front of them. The Red Sea is not parted. In fact, Moses has not even lifted up his, his rod so that the Red Sea can part yet. So the, the obstacle is still in their way but they're moving, they're taking a step. Do not wait until you've figured everything out. Do not wait until all of the obstacles that are in your way have been removed. You take the step. And when you're taking the step, the next step, God is working as you take the step to orchestrate your deliverance and open up a door for you in your future. It's when God saw them taking the next step that God sent what the Bible says is an east wind. Moses takes his rod, stretches it across the waters of the Red Sea. The Red Sea parts. Had they stood still and waited for the Red Sea to part, it never would have parted. It was only when they were moving that God moved. If you want to see God move in your life, move. God moves because you had enough faith to take the next step 
and move. And I'm a witness. I have seen God move in some tremendous ways in so many lives because they took the next step of faith. Even though the obstacles had not been removed, even though the Red Sea had not parted, they took the next step. God moved because they moved. So your future, you just take the next step. You just deal with today and God will give you enough grace to take the next step. Let me ask you a question as I close this thought. And that is, when do you start guiding your car? When, you, when do you turn the wheel on your car? Do you turn the wheel on your car when your car's parked, when the engine is off? No, you don't turn the wheel when the car is parked and the engine is off. It's only when the car is moving that you turn the wheel. In fact, you can't even move the wheel if it's parked and cut off. You gotta turn it on, you gotta get moving, and that's when you start guiding the car. Well, maybe the reason why you're not experiencing the guidance of God in your life is because you're parked. Get up, get moving, take the next step, and see if God won't grab the handle wheel of your life and start directing you and guiding you into your future. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, help us to know fear and know what to do about those fears. You don't give us the grace to take a week at a time or a month at a time, but give us the grace to trust you on a daily basis and to take the next step. Even though we have not figured everything out, even though the obstacles have not been totally removed, we're trusting your guidance. We're trusting your leadership. So we will not be afraid. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with us on this, another powerful point to ponder. May God bless you. Don't forget, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Uh, please contact us here at info at ssclive.org. May God bless you. May God keep you. And as we depart, don't forget what we always say. Stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. See you tomorrow.